Now, how do you get nine gorillas from a wildlife park here in the UK to their natural home in West Africa? Well, that is something our next guest, Damien Aspinall, will be talking to us about. He has just overseen the transportation of a family of gorillas from his conservation facility just south of London to a national reserve in Gabon. Well, it's been a journey by land, sea and air, with the last leg involving a helicopter loaned by Gabon's president, Ali Bongo Ondimba. It's an undertaking which has taken some considerable time, money and risk to accomplish. So, Damien Aspel, hello and welcome to you. Um, why do it? Because I think that the animals have a right to go back home. I think if we're going to keep animals in captivity and keep them in zoos, then I believe that we have to breed them and then I think we have to try and find ways to send them home. I, I just don't think we should keep animals as prisoners without parole. All right, well, send them home and uh, quite a journey. Just give right. us an idea of what, what was involved. It took about a year, didn't it? It took about a year. We were partnering with, with DHL, who were fantastic, and basically they were trucked from Kent to Brussels, then on a plane to Lagos, change planes, then on another plane to Franceville, then a helicopter ride and finally a boat trip to get to this island. So it was a hell of a trip, 24 hours. And nine gorillas on board. I mean, nine how did you feed them? Well, I mean, they were fed through the, the crates they were, they were in. But you must have taken loads of food. We took loads to do of that. food and we had the vets there. And it, was, it, was, it was a logistical nightmare. Uh, could, did something go wrong? Could have something gone wrong? It could have done. But honestly, we, because the trip was being handled by DHL, it just went so smoothly. So, uh, what, really nothing? No close no, shaves? No, no close shaves at all. All right, and, um, but not these gorillas reared in the United Kingdom. I think only one has actually ever yes. come from Africa. Right. Are they going to be able to... I know it's their natural habitat, but are they going to be able to cope with going back to Gabon? We hope so, but mm. we don't know. I mean, this has never been done before. But, you know, we always underestimate the intelligence of these animals, and so, you know, I think I'm 80% I'm sure they're going to be fine. There's just something innate in them that exactly. will make them think... Um, this is our natural habitat, the not The first thing they did London. when they walked out of the crate was go straight into the forest. Oh, really? Yeah, straight in, and we've hardly seen them since. So that's a good sign. And, of course, the other question is, are they safe from poachers? They're safe from poachers because we protect them from poachers. We've never lost a gorilla to poaching. But they're not safe from other gorillas or, you know, wild chimps or snakes or leopard. And th those are the things they're going to have to learn. And so what has to happen from now, then? They're gonna, if you say they've just gone and they've disappeared, I mean, are, are they being tagged or anything so you know where to find them if the, you need to? The first stage is they're on, they're on a very large island in the middle of the Ampasa River. So there they'll climatize, there they'll get used to the, you know, the trees and all this sort of stuff. And then three months later we build a bridge to the mainland and then they go completely wild. Because, I mean, Gabon is about, what, 90% rainforest, isn't it? So it's the size kind of, of it's a, half the size of France and 90% rainforest and one and a half million people. So, so they'll be safe. They will be safe. I we, mean, could something, what do the animal experts say, could something conceivably go wrong with, with them? Look, there's no question this is the most dangerous thing we've done. But, you know, we're doing everything in our power to make sure that they are okay. But it is the most dangerous thing we've done. I mean, there's lots of things that could go wrong. Mm. Now, Damien, you're from a, a family, of course, that has been in, yep. in, in uh, zoos for, for many, many years and conservation, of course. I mean, do you think that in a way this kind of redefines what people think of a zoo and what its role should be and it isn't just taking your children on a Sunday afternoon or whenever to go and look at the animals and some people say that's not actually fair to the animals. I mean I really think all zoos from today should have proper reintroduction programs of animals, proper conservation programs. If they're going to keep wild animals I think they have to do large in situ projects so they have to be taxed. If you're going to keep gorillas then you've got to pay for gorillas in the wild. If you keep rhino then you've got to look after rhino in the wild and I think the world has got to change and the people watching this show have got to change themselves because they, they should demand it of their local zoo. And I think the days of going to watch row upon row upon row of animals without any real conservation, I think we're past that. And I think all zoos, including us, have got to change. All right, Damien Aspinall, thanks very much indeed for telling us about that. Thank you very much. Fascinating journey of your nine gorillas going to uh, Gabon in West Africa.